Yeah. Series and those games will be able to pick up on 1480 WCMS as well. But uh, tonight is football and a long weekend. And right now we've got a big game. The Bainville Bobcats and the Bishop Carroll High School Huskies. Chris and I will be back with the opening kickoff and right after this. And number 24, Ryan Sakalas. Just take two? Yeah, just do two. Kavastic and Maylis. How we doing, Chris? We're doing great. We got a page down and we ain't even started the game yet. So we got uh, we got three three pages to go. Right on that plate. Oh yeah. Interesting story. I can always tell you the interesting story about Bishop Carroll, who was the first bishop in the United States. <laughs> Church history. Bishop Carroll has won the title. Bishop Carroll the title. Bishop Carroll has won the title. Puts the ball in the air. And we are underway. The ball will come down and be taken by Rashford. And Rashford at the 5 to 10, across the 15 to the 20. And out near the 25-yard line before he is wrapped up by a host of Blairsville Bobcats. And leading the charge was Hauser for Blairsville. And Bill Lenhart also made the stop, uh, was in on that tackle as well. So that's where the Huskies will put it in play, first and 10. On their own 22 yard line as we begin this. Evening's game, section one of the Appalachia Conference. And running around in the huddle is Dan Bowley. Jody Dumb and Brian Sakalas are the halfbacks, and they'll go from a wishbone formation. And the give is to the second back through, and that is Sakalas. And Sakalas now reversing his field, fumbles the ball. It's loose on the ground, and it is recovered by the Blairsville Bobcats. And the Bobcats have the ball. J.D. Hauser, J.W. Hauser with the recovery for the Blairsville Bobcats. Hauser business. First and ten at the Bishop Carroll 20 yard line. And as you can see what the coach for Bishop Carroll said, we're beating ourselves. He tried to make a big play out of nothing and ended up costing himself. Uh, by fumbling the football. Bowers gets over the ball now, and it's going to be a straight handoff. This is the fullback, Mark Swanson, over the left tackle for about three yards. And, and Swanson gets it down to uh, the 17 yard line, and he was hit on the play by Matt Rashford. Come on with eye troubles. Make sure you get your glasses on. <laughs> so make it a safe yeah, 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 Give him five on the play. Make it second down and five from just shy of the 15 yard line, and the Bobcats in business early. They can turn this uh, turnover into six points for the Blairsville Club. Jim, we didn't allude to was the quarterback Bowers is a very good kicker as well, so they may have a good field goal kicker. Bowers calling the signals, gives the ball to the second back through. That is Swanson, and Swanson off right tackle, breaks the tackle, he fumbled the football, and it is the Bishop Carroll Huskies who recover it. Bishop Carroll on the recovery, and coming up with the football is Kevin McCary at the nine yard line, and so far it's three turnovers. Situation there where Swanson was attempting to make a little bit of extra yardage, and as another tackler came along, they were able to strip the football from uh, from Swanson's hands and a, a big turn over the other way. That'll help the Bishop Carroll squad out as they will attempt to, to drive it out of their own end now. First and ten, Bishop Carroll with ten minutes to go in the first period. They have the ball at their own ten. Bully calling the signals, fakes the handoff, gives it to the first back through. That is Sakalis. And Sakalis is out across the 10 to the 11-yard line. And off goes to Brian Sakalis for Bishop Carroll. By Matilla there. Tackle made by J.W. Hauser, yeah, Hauser also in on the stop. So give him two yards on the play, make it second down and eight. Second down and eight, eight for Bishop Carroll. Second down and 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 eight for Bishop Carroll. Second now they give us to the receiver, and this is that crowd clock that we gave talked about, Gerald Knabel with it. Gerald Knabel was out in the 19 yard line before he's finally run out of bounds. They'll mark his forward progress at the at the 19 and a half. That's very close to a first down, but that's that cross buck play that we talked about out of the ring team. Yeah, uh, and again, as you say, there's a lot of different things you can do on that, and the idea of the cross buck, what we mean is the guards and all the flow of the play is going to one side. In this case, they were going to the right, and the uh, flanker back in that situation for Bishop Carroll comes back around on the uh, left side, and then they just try and beat the green. That's the situation there where you try and get a club that uh, is highly into the pursuit and then likes to go to the ball. They like to swarm with the ball when they do stuff like that. Trying to get caught up here on who we got playing defense for the Blairsville Bobcats. Again, both these clubs 
it's mainly a two-way situation which we alluded to earlier where they're playing on both sides of the football. Bully with the back split behind him. One man in the slot to the near side. And Bully gives the ball to the first back through, and that is Sakalas again. And Sakalas is stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and it will be very close, Chris. As they give him the forward progress, and he has the first down. So he was inside six inches needed, and that's, uh, that's about what he got with seven inches. J.W. Hauser again on the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats. First and 10, Bishop Carroll, you're on 20 yard line. First and 10, they move it out to their own 20 yard line. We are at 848 of the first period. No score, Vince Capozzi and Chris Kelly with you. Glad you could join us for high school football, a chance to look at District 6 today. Bowley leads them out of the huddle now, trying to set it. The backs are split and they're going from a two tight end formation. And Bowley gives it to Sakalas off left tackle. Good running room out to the 25 yard line. And, uh, and Sakala brings Carroll. him down there. And again, it's basic football, uh, Vince. Off left tackle that time. Sakalas, the main ball here thus far for Bishop Carroll. And Pick up a four yards on the play. Again, now we're still inside their own 30 yard team. line. So I don't think Bishop Carroll wants to turn anything fancy just yet as they attempt to move down the field. They'll give him four, make it second and six from uh, the 25 yard line. Bowley leads them out again. The backs are split behind him. Jody Dum and Brian Sakalis. And this time they give this to the second back two. That's Jeff Canadian. He's out to the outside. He's off to the races. 40, 25, 30, 20. Goodbye. He's got the turbo charge again. And he was ready for a touchdown. And again, what happened there, as you said, on the option play, the end of the right hand from Blairsville decided to take an inside pursuit instead of holding up and hanging on to the, uh, uh, keeping the pursuit to the outside. He took the touchdown. 75 yards, Jerry Dunn will be on to attempt the extra point. And he'll do it out of a Brian Sakalas hold. Soccer style kicker at the post to the right. The ball is down, so are the flags, and the kicker is good. Almost blocked. We may have an off stage or back it up five yards. Bishop Carroll penalized five yards. Set to kick again. Number seven, Jody Dunn. And Dunn this time mishits the ball and it is wide to the left. Good. Good. Yeah. And that'll spark you in a hurry. And again, it was just a simple uh, option type play to the left side. Well executed, and then Jared Canaver showed off his speed. He just went down the left sideline with a 75 yard run, and that'll, that'll get the crowd pumped up in a hurry. They are excited to see a now and turn it back around and see if they can put some points on the race. Jody Dumb will kick it off. The dropping deep to receive is Rob Graves, and it's a short kick. It instead comes down to Mike Jamison. Jamison cuts it upfield and is off to the 39 yard line before he's brought down on the play by Chris Smith. So that's where Blazers will put it in play first. First and 10, their own 39 yard line. And Chris, that's going to take some starch out of you. Oh, they had the big Mike Jamison for Blairsville. Tackle made by number 74. They actually it away. And on their second attempt, uh, Bishop Carroll made, uh, made good with a big, uh, big run and the first quarter of the ball game. Bobcats break the huddle, and Joe Bowers, the 5'8, 165 pound junior quarterback, sets them in the eye formation. They give it to Graves running out of the tailback spot. Graves breaks the tackle with a river field across the city. Cuts it up. He's got a chance to go all the way. 40 yard line, 30 yard line, 25, 20, 15, and finally caught by the line. Running him down is Kevin McCary at the five yard line. That match uh, was also in there, but boy, oh boy, talk about exciting football. They put Robbie Graves. They've got him in the backfield here. They'll go from the full house backfield. Bauer sets his club. Gives it off to the other back. This is Mark Swanson, and he is off right tackle and very near the goal line. And just shy, the, the Blairsville player signaling touchdown, but he is shy by about a half a yard. Second and goal from the one. Split a man to the left. Run from the full house. And this is Swanson, and Swanson is in for the touchdown, diving over the pile. And the Blairsville Bobcats have answered right back. Three plays. Play 60, 61 yards, I think it was, or 59 yards. Score it out, tied to six, but the one yard touchdown run by Mark Swanson and four plays. We got this ball game even, and now we're going to 
The ball is down, Bowers' kick is up, and he kicks it out of the stadium. And so the lightning has struck, Bobcats have the lead two minutes after they gave it up. And now, Bowers kicks the air out of the ball. Rashford takes it, cuts it upfield across the 20, has a seat 30, and is brought down at the 40-yard line. And making the touchdown saving play with Jimmy Chabala, and also coming up to help him out was Brandon Clark. One interesting point, they ran Robbie Graves out of the uh, tailback spawn. I'm just wondering Brandon Clark, if that's what's happening for the players now. Matt Rashford returns it to the 40-yard line. Bishop Carroll, first and 10 for the Huskies. He's out now. He wasn't out of the first series, but he's out at the left corner right now. Dan Boley moves him out of the huddle. They go for the wishbone. <laughs> Boley calling the signal. Gives it to Sakalas. Sakalas breaks it down. Yeah. Jared Canable with it. And Canable is out to midfield and about a run shy of the first down. Brought down by Bill Lenhart out there. But boy, just some gaping holes on both sides of the field now, Chris. You know, when they talk about the, the run setting up the pass, the run also sets up the run. And so if you run the ball wide and get a 75-yard run, suddenly that stretches the defense farther out side to side. And that'll open up holes on the inside. And that's exactly what happened on that side there. Could be uh, 10 they're gonna for official. I think so. <laughs> Isn't that what they talk about on the television set? That's what um, John Madden likes to say. And of course, Chris, a little later, will be using the WCNS Telestrator. Yes, it's not the rest of place. Right here, boom. <laughs> from the wishbone formation, Bully calls the signals at second and one from the 49, straight ahead, and Bully has the first down. Down to the 47 yard line of the Bobcats. So give them the first down. Blairsville is coming out with a lot of different teams Back playing. Our first defense, Stephen Ling in there with the first tackle. You know, the tackle for Blairsville. Mark Swanson on the stop, too. Yes. Trying to figure out who they all got in there. Changing lineups on us as we play. From the wishbone again, and we haven't seen the wing tee yet. And the handoff is to Dumb, and Dumb is dropped in the backfield. Brought down by Bill Lenhart all the way back at his own 47. That'll be a loss of six. Or make it five, make it second down and 15 now. With 4.41 to go in the first period, and an exciting first period it's been. Yes, it has been. I mean, they're just trading big blows here. 75-yard uh, runs and 55-yard runs. Play for the Huskies. Second down and 15. Doing it on the ground. The Fish Carroll, 47-yard line. Bishop Carroll breaks the huddle, and now they'll go from the wing tee formation. The backs are split. Ratchford is split to the far side. Bully will roll, looking to throw, sheds the tackler, and it's not unable to shed him. And making the play coming out is Mike Jamison, and Jamison drops Bully all the way back at the 35-yard line, and he was almost in the huddle there. Yeah, they had that play well read. Now I see why they're running the ball a lot as they attempted a pass play there. They just got the, uh, no uh, pass block on Bishop Carroll that play. Fine play by Mike Jamison as he busted in there for a big sack. That'll make it third down, and they've got to go to the 412 area code for the first down. Third and 25. Third down and 26 for Bishop Carroll. Bowley sets his backs. So they're split behind him. There's dual receivers, one on each side, and Bowley's straight drop will throw. It's a screen pass, and the pass is badly underthrown and incomplete. Bowley was looking to get it out to Sakalas at the 30-yard line, and the pass underthrown. Good pressure by the front wall of the Blairsville Bobcats, and leading that charge was Brandon Clark. Dumb will drop back in punt formation and going back to receive is Rob Graves and he has already electrified this crowd. Graves deploys at his own 35 yard line. Jody Dumb gets a good snap from center. Blairsville sends everybody but the kick is a line drive and Graves will take it at the 32 yard line. Across the 35, 40, breaks the tackle, 45 and out to the 47 yard line. Finally tripped up over there by Brian Creaney. So with three minutes and 15 seconds to go, Blairsville will put it in play at their own 46-yard line. 
Yeah, and that was a, uh, a great show me something there. 6'1", 175 pounds. He's got some Where's nice moves to the side with the run, but uh, some real soft hands on that live drive uh, punt. He uh, took it in stride and, and took up some positive yardage for the Blairsville Bobcats. The Bobcats sent everybody but the cheerleaders trying to block that punt, and Dumb did a good job just to get it off. Joel Bauer sets his team now. Gives the ball to Graves out of the tailback position, and he is leveled at the line of the scrimmage. And brought down by Tim Noggle. Whatever Jim Noggle and Noggle just leveled him for a loss of two. Not using Eric Graves in the backfield, but Graves has done such a fine job of not to leave him there. So he's a switch from the flank for the running backs brought that time. However, they should care up to the challenge. They snuffed out as they just tried to run a straight uh, trap play up the middle. And that was for, I guess, a loss of yards. Second down and 11 with 2.23 to go. The Bobcats up seven to six. High formation, Graves is the tailback. And it's the quick pass over the middle to the tight end, and it's the blitz for Mike Jameson. They fake the ball to Swanson, and then the quick pass to the tight end was in the over the middle. Of the and again, the division is the same. Mistakes in the possible situation. A good play call by Blairsville with the, trying to get the heavy off the heavy rush by Bishop Carroll, so they tried the quick hitter to the tight end, and it was a perfectly called play. Unfortunately, tight end Jamison couldn't pull it in. They were faced with a third and long situation. Now they shift into the shotgun formation. Bowers is back, and will look to throw. Four receivers in the pattern. Bowers, and he has his man. The pass is complete. Down to the 44-yard line of the Bishop Carroll Huskies. And hauling in the play there is John Ivanko. John Ivanko. Give him credit, he got that ball, he was about uh, nine yards. about a nine yard gain, and he Vanko runs it, quickly turned it upfield and picked up that extra yard for a first down. First and I guess Vanko has moved to that flanker spot since Graves is running out of that halfback position. On the Bishop Carroll, 44 yard line. They're down to the Bishop Carroll, 44, first and 10 from the I formation. I'll tell you what, Joel Bowser showed me about it. He's got a very strong arm, something about 5'8", but he didn't get that ball in. Option pitch to Graves. He's got a lot of running room off right tackle and is all the way down to the 34-yard line. Of Bishop Carroll before Galen DeMocchi finally runs him out. And any coach will tell you, speed kills. And that's what Rob Graves got. He got a lot of speed that time. They had a nice pass play in the previous play. They come back with just like a, I guess it's a quick pitch option type play where he gave it up to him real quickly. and. Uh, Grace took it to the outside and his speed Second down and less than a yard the nine yards. Second down now and about half a yard from the 34 yard line of the Bishop Carroll Huskies. Blairsville out of the I formation again. They'll split Ivanko to the far side. Pitch the ball to Graves coming the other way. He slips the tackle, 35, 30, still on his feet and finally brought down at the 28 yard line, Matt Ratchford on the spot. Tackle made by Matt Ratchford. And that'll be the first down. They're just taking it from hash mark to hash mark. Whatever side they're on, they're throwing it to Graves. They're pitching it to Graves for the, the wide side. First down for uh, Blairsville. Rob Graves Blairsville. is that uh, Tim Brown type look. Line. He's got the nice moves and the strong legs. And they warded off the tackle that time, picked up another first down. Blairsville is stretching Bishop Carroll's defense by uh, running a lot of wide plays thus far. Bowers brings them out. Straight ahead handoff to Mark Swanson, and Swanson, Mark, Swanson gets down to about the 25 yard line before he is finally wrapped up on the play by Chris Smith. Made by Jim and Brian for with 27 seconds to go, that'll bring up a second line and seven. I'm really, uh, I'm really impressed with the coach, not that means anything for them, but uh, both coaches have had a lot of nice uh, different play calls here in the ball game. They mixed it up real well thus far. And, uh, have kept both of the defenses off balance. And that's why we've got a couple of scores here in the first quarter. Graves, second back through, cuts it up and is down to the 18 yard line where he is brought down to the by And Ryan that is the final the play of the first period with the score. Okay, you got the hospital. up the plays offensively. Not a lot of passing going on, but running inside, outside, off tackle, cross plays, and a lot of nice play calling thus far. Third and four, this is Swanson battling his way down to the 20 Mark yard Swanson line. With the carry for Blairsville. Wrapped up on the play by Kevin McGarry. And he'll be shy of the first down by about Pick two yards. Three yards on the play now. Fourth and one do because for as said, Joe Bowers, the quarterback, also has a real nice leg, a strong leg, and um, 
balls at, I think, at the 21 yard line. They'll probably still go for it here. But uh, they could probably attempt some field goals down around the 20 yard line here tonight. A very play. They're going to go for it. This is an interesting alignment. They put Bill Lenhart, the left tackle, in the backfield, give the ball to Swanson. He dives over everybody and it's very Mark close Swanson to the first down. Matt Rashford lassoed him out of the air and brought him down, but they tried a refrigerator carry right there and putting the big man in that pitch. Oh, yeah, yeah, they put uh, him and the fullback right over the left guard or the right guard and right tackle, and they just kind of stacked everything up there and said, here we come, and then they just handed off the game to the left over that side. It's a, a big game for them. A big gainer as far as a lot of yardage, but it uh, did the job and got the first down for him. 11 minutes and 8 seconds to go now, and is just underway in the second period. 7 6, the Bobcats lead. Joel Bowers pitches the ball to Graves. It's on the ground. They're still fighting for it, and I think Graves or Bauer may have gotten it back. Bauer's able to fall on it. Everybody scrambles, but the ball comes back to the 24 yard line. And a fine play that time by Matt Ratchford as he uh, just got in there to disrupt it. Didn't Where's allow Bowers enough time fumble. to make a clean pitch. And I think Bowers play. saw Ratchford, now. so he had to throw it a little bit lower. Carroll, Otherwise, it been, the, the pitch might have been intercepted. And uh, in order to do that, he threw it too low on the ground. Graves had to cover up the fumble. And a reminder, you're listening to 1480 WCNS Latrobe Greensboro. They're at home for high school football all season long. He did it so well. <laughs> From the I formation. Powers drops back, looking to throw, and out for Ivanka, and the pass is complete. Other than it is Greg Kunkel walking it in. Kunkel down at the 18 yard line, brought down on the play by Jared Knable. And that's a pick up of four, get it back to the original Kunkel. line of scrimmage. Third and Kevin McCary, from the 18. Good job on both sides between the quarterback and Second Kunkel, the receiver. Kunkel ran a very strong ten. pattern. He went down now. three to four yards and then cut it out. And Bowers, that's something you work on in practice. That's a complete timing pattern, and he got it to his receiver for a pickup of a couple of yards, but now they're in a third and long situation. They shift from the I formation to the shotgun. The backs are split beside Bowers. He'll look to throw. Good protection. Now it breaks down. Screen pass. Graves has it. Graves cuts it up and is down to the eight yard line. Fumble the football. I think the fumble's going to cost him the first down, even though they recovered. Dan's are doing down there on the uh, sideline telling his players, why aren't you going to wake up? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I don't know about waking up for Bishop Carroll, but I'm really impressed with the players and the kids as far as, I mean, that's a tough play. A, a, a screen pass like that yeah, is a tough play. Uh, the linemen have got to be doing certain things, and the kids have got to be disciplined to, to not just hurry up and run out there and, and start to block, but to delay for a second, make it look like a regular pass play. And that was a well-executed play for anybody, let alone a high school. That's on the move. But they've got it fourth and two from the 10. They need to get to the eight. And Bauer staggers his count, and that's enough to get the Huskies offside. Great play that time by senior Jim Garvin, the center. He saw the defensive lineman come offside. He immediately snapped the ball to his quarterback, and that means they're offside, and they get the free punt. Sean Leahy jumping offside, and he knew it right away. As soon as he broke the neutral zone, that was when the penalty occurred, and he just put his head down on the turf. And that's the kind of things, you know, you talk about your good athletes, the fast runners, the good, strong interior linemen, but coaches, I think, every time will take this player with the smarts upstairs to know little things like First that. Snap the ball, get the free five. We're talking Carol, about the play before the time out, uh, the, the screen pass and the well executed, the kids knowing what they're supposed to do. And Bill's uh, looking really good right now. First and goal from the five, I formation, dual receivers to the left. Bowers to Graves, off right tackle, and Graves is brought down. Sean Leahy making up for the last play. Drops Graves for a three-yard loss back to the eight-yard line. Tried off tackle play that time, and uh, Bishop Carroll just snuffed it out, and they had a host of ball players in there, as you said. Uh, Graves and a whole bunch of them. Or Graves was the man who got tackled. But you had uh, Carol ball, Morris, Carol, and Don Switzler, a whole bunch of guys in on that tackle that time. You don't think Carol. Graves is strong? He brought, or rather, uh, Leahy is strong. He brought Graves down with one arm. Second down and goal from the nine now. They'll split the receivers and the back soon and I formation. Bowers will throw a quick hitter over the middle. And this time they have the touchdown. Mike Jamison hauls it in for the touchdown. And that's the same play they ran before. Too. That's a sign of a good coach. He saw that it worked. The only thing about the first time he did it was the tight end didn't catch the ball. But hey, that's uh, just an execution type thing. The play was open the first time. Unfortunately, he didn't catch it. Coach put the play in the playbook. Brought it back out here a little bit later. And it uh, culminates the drive with 8.30 to go in the second.
Blairsville has scored again. They have the They will attempt to make this a 13 to 6. I'm sorry. They'll attempt to make it a 14 6 game now. Bowers will attempt to kick. Bowers. But the snap is down. The kick is up. And Bowers kicks it to the ground. The kick is good. They'll come back up the field. They'll turn it around in the second period. 14 6. The Bobcats will kick it out. We'll be right back. Dust Ligony. <laughs> Dust They're a good squad. Bowers will kick it away. Sikalis is deep. But the kick will go to the other side and Matt Ratsford will take it. Matt Ratsford will take it. 25, 30, 35. Breaks the tackle. Still on his feet and out to the 40 yard line before he is finally snowed under. Both these teams with a lot of speed. Matt Ratsford showing it off there as he took that thing straight up the gut and made a play. I think we have an injured uh, player for the player down. Josh Benazzoli makes the tackle. Bill Lenhart's slow in getting up, but he is up now, coming off under his own power, so Lenhart will have to be replaced at least one play on defense for Blairsville. But uh, good to see him come off under his own power. Probably just got his bell rung real quick there, and we should probably see him back real soon for Blairsville. 8.22 to go in the first half, 14-6, the Bobcats lead on debut night on WCNS. That's right. Heck, these guys are going well. We should do more blitz. <laughs> Wishbone. And the give is to Sigalis, and Sigalis is all the way up to the 49 yard line of the Huskies. He finally wrestled to the turf and coming up to make the hit for the Blairsville Bobcats was John Ivanka. Pick up of eight yards on the play by Brian Sakala. Yeah, they, 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 they said they were a winky club, Bishop Carroll, but they're, they're running out of this full house backfield. Oh, oh, Wishbone, so to speak, and uh, it's not, they're, they're moving the ball offense for themselves. It's just mistakes are killing them. Second and two from their own 48 yard line. And the give is to Knable, and Knable is across the midfield strike and down to the 46 yard line, where he is brought down in the arms of Rob Graves. And get that ball. If you're playing the uh, safety positions, the, uh, I guess the cornerback positions, actually, you've got to remember to contain because we saw what he can do if you let him get outside. He's already had a big bust. Uh, a big run for 75 yards for Blake Bell. He's a careless touchdown. At least we haven't called the Donatos yet. Right. Seven minutes to go now. First and ten. Bowley sets his team. They'll run out of the wishbone again with two tight ends. Foley, and the ball is fumbled, and Blairsville will recover. Mark Swanson falls on it at the 42-yard line. They were trying to give the ball to Matt Ratchford, and he never had a handle on it. No, he was Fumble trying to run it out the football. And, and it, it hit, the, hit Swanson right on the numbers that bounced away from him, but he was able to react and bounce on that football. Fine play, Mark Swanson to the recovery. And a first down now for Blairsville as they'll try and capitalize on this mistake and maybe get another score before we get to halftime. Bobcats in possession now. They're in business. First and 10 at their own 40. Bowers sets his team. He's got a flanker to the far side. The backs are in an eye. Fake. They'll look to pitch to Graves. The pitch is back. Graves has the football. Across the 50-yard line and at the 45 of the Huskies, Galen Novotny runs him out of bounds. But it's a first down. And this is just good old Woody Hayes power football. And I'll tell you what, again, Joe Bowers with a fine play that time as uh, they ran the option. And I, you know, I don't know if they say the quarterback has eyes in the back. He said, two guys are him down. And another guy was coming out of the front. And Bowers had the front of his to hang on to that ball for the last second, and then give it to Graves. And Graves did the rest. He showed that super speed and picked up the big first down. Well executed play all around for all the Blairsville players. High formation. They'll shift into the shotgun. Three receivers. Bowers will throw. Penalty mark is down. Going long over the middle. Ivanko has it. And Ivanko will go into the two-yard line, almost into the end zone. Galen Avani brings him down. But hold on. We've got holding back here against the Bobcats. But a nice pass from Bowers to Ivanko right on the numbers. Super arm and, and running. Uh, great catch that time by Ivanko. Just a well-rounded play all around. Again, I'm really impressed with the way Blaze will. You know, they're running these pitch options, and then they're running off tackle, and they're using the fullback, and then they're throwing long, and they really looked uh, strong. The only thing that uh, hurt them that time was they got a holding penalty. It's going to bring it back, but uh, 
No executed play outside of the hold. The hold will bring it back. They'll do it from the spot of the foul. First and 23, the holding occurred actually three yards behind the line of scrimmage. So the 10 yard penalty brings it back. First and 23, all the way back to the 43 yard line. These are the type of things we said. Bloodsville's look really strong. They come into the game two and three, and those are the kind of things that give you three losses. You have a big play like that, but you nullify it by making a holding call. Flood left formation, three receivers to the left, one to the right. The pitcher's the Swanson, and Swanson across the 45 to the 46 yard line, and he is clobbered over there by Don Switzler. Tackle me. He's down. I I'll tell you what, big time play. He just stuck his head down. A heck of a collision, and he is hurt. He is down. Chris and I will check the injury. 5.48 to go, second period. Blairsville 14, Bishop Carroll 6. And Chris and I will be right back. Hey, the true Gain three yards on the play. Third down, cool. second down and 20. Just, can't can't just one here, Chuck. He's back up. Boy, but he's wobbling. It wasn't him. It was 85. Injured player for Blairsville was Mike Jamison. That's a tight end. Yeah. Don't play the thing, just send it back. Mike Jamison was the injured Blairsville Bobcat. He was up a little wobbly, but off the field under his own power. Second down now in 20. From the I formation, dual receivers to the far side. Bowers sets his team. Gives the ball to Graves, off right tackle, and Graves is stopped for a loss. Bursting in is Ben Stohan. And Stohan makes the tackle for a loss of another three. And that's what you gotta do with a real fast uh, player like a Rob Graves. You have got to get to him before he can get the Jets going. Get him while he's in first and second game before he can put that thing in order. Well defense play that time by Bishop Carroll. It's just a breakdown here or there that has hurt these clubs whenever the other team has been able to move and score. Third and 23. Dual receivers to the far side. Bowers sets his team from the I formation. Bowers straight back, looking to throw off to the sideline, and the pass is incomplete. And we're looking for Greg Parkle out there, and the pass is overthrown at the 45-yard line of Bishop Carroll. We see Blairsley with their first punt of the season, but I, you know, that was a good play again that time, just a little bit overthrown. Good pass protection. They had a short quarterback, so I think their blocking scheme is set up to try and uh, push the rushers, the uh, oncoming rushers to the sides and let uh, Bauer step up in there. And good job he had to get a lot of time, good uh, pass protection by the Blairsville. Deep to receive. Second Bishop punt for Blairsville, Bowers will kick. Good snap, and Bowers kicks the air out of the ball. Kunkel will call for it, make the fair catch at the 21 yard line. That was a 39 yard punt, that's a pretty big hunt. Not bad at all, so first and 10 now. The Huskies will put it in play at their own 23 yard line. Bowers does it all. Someone told me he also sells popcorn at halftime. First and 10 for Bishop Carroll, the ball their own 23 yard line. Well rounded effort by all the, uh, the Blairs football players and Bishop Carroll for that matter, but uh, got a good game, just an eight point ball game here. This team's playing well, that's good. Bowley sets his team. Out of the wishbone again, dual tight ends. Bowley will throw, looking downfield, left-handed toss, and the pass is complete to Switzler. And Switzler is down to the 39 yard line, a penalty marker down also, and will probably have a face mask in the ball on the end. So now Bishop Kimmel shows us they can throw the football as uh, Switzler just took the ball from the tight end spot and just threw it down the middle of the field. Chris, you talked about it earlier. You said about the excellent play calling, and they had run out of that formation so many times. This time they faked the run, and this is the biggie. This is a 15-yard face masking call against the Bobcats. It brings it down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, again, as I said, the play down. calling, a beautiful play because the Switzlers, I don't think, is going to be confused with Carl Lewis any time, but he got out of there in the middle. Now, and first and ten, Brian Huskies, the Bobcats, 29-yard line. The defensive back there for Blairsville, and, and they were just caught flat-footed. They didn't think that he would run a long pattern like that, and it was a well-executed play on both ends by Bowley and uh, by Swiftly to pick up the big play and then the penalty actually gives him 15 more yards to boot. 4.25 to go. 
This time they'll run. This is Knavel off right tackle, has about three yards before he is finally wrapped up on the play by Brandon Clark. A lot of offense out of both teams thus far. In this ball game, 14 to 6. Blaze the lead. Still got four minutes to go here in the second quarter, so Bishop Carroll, if they can punch this thing in and then go for the two pointer, we can get into the lock on the ball. Giving up a big pull on defense. Call it second and eight from the 29-yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats. Bowley leads them out of the huddle. They'll go from the wishbone again, but they'll, they'll flank Switzler out a little bit to the left. Bowley, handoff, takes the handoff. The pitch is for Canaver, and he takes everybody out. And Canaver was down to the 15-yard line before he has finally run out of bounds over there by Graves. And also coming in to help on the stop was Mark Swanson. But a nice fake into Sakalis, and they pitched it out. And again, they're using all their weapons. They went inside on the last one. They went outside this play. They went long two plays. And uh, good play calling that time. And Knavel showed me a lot of speed there as he got outside again. To pick up the first and 10, Bishop Carroll, on the first 16 yard line. And Blairs will call timeout to regroup. Three minutes, 31 Five seconds to play in the first half. They'll score the Blairsville Bobcats 14, the Bishop Carroll Husky 6. Chris and I will be. Right the touchdown right after that. Uh, and then another score to go ahead. And now we see Bishop Carroll threatening here to at least to get right back in it. If they can get the two corner after a touchdown, it'll be time. Dual tight ends from the wishbone formation, first and 10. Sakalis with an off left tackle. Slips the tackle, still on his feet at the five. And all the way down to the three yard line. And he rode Rob Graves about four yards. Just drove him back. That play was more like a five or six yard game. And he just kept the legs of turning. And now they got themselves a first and goal. Well, got the one yard line. Right, can't see that. <laughs> first and goal, they'll mark it at the one and a half yard line. Three minutes and 14 seconds to go. Crowd excited now as they're threatening here to push me. Again, out of that wishbone formation, Boltley sets his team. Bobcats dig in. Sakalis left tackle and he gets nothing. Williams in on the stop. Swanson also there. And now we see a bit of a goal line stand by Blairsville. We've had a little bit of everything here in the first half. Back away by Steve Ling. We're going to need three more of those. We're going to need four territory for sure. So. Second down and goal. Steve Ling is also in the stop for Blairsville. Bully will set them again. Chris, you know what's open here? That little pass again. The one that they got the big yardage on. Fake it and see if they can get Switzler open. Bowley sets his team and he goes straight ahead, may have dropped the snap. He's very close to the goal line. Huskies say he's in. We'll see what the referee says. He gets the only vote and he votes yes. It's a Huskies. And oh my, we are back to a close ball game. 14, 12 now. High formation, Canaveral is stacked to the far side. They'll bring Rashford in motion to the near side. It's a pass over the middle and incomplete. And Bowley was level on the play and the receiver turned in and he threw out. And the pass is incomplete. And there's a problem occurred. They were trying, I think, to go to Jared Canaveral uh, on the right side, but uh, they weren't on the same page because Canaveral. Jody, Jody Dumb kicks the ball in the air. It will come down and be fielded by Mark Swanson at the 20. 25 30 up the middle into the 37 yard line. We feel dumb helps to make the tackle. Sean Height will be there to bring him down. Now that's where the Bobcats, with two minutes and five seconds to play, will put it in play. First of all, it's a real nice backfield. They've got Bowers, who's uh, short but very mobile and has a strong arm and sees the field goal well, despite his long side. The third of that. Alex Swanson and Williams really complement themselves well. Swanson's a good hard fullback type runner. Than, uh, I should say Rob Graves running the halfback spot tonight with all the speed. Flood left formation, three receivers to the left, one to the right. Bowers will throw, protection breaks down, steps up, breaks loose, 
is at the 45, across the 45, into the 47-yard line before he is finally ridden out of bounds by Sigalis and Rashford. Sean Hyde also coming up to help. But uh, nice movement there by Bowers. Just I'll tell you, for the little guys, I said he showed a strong arm, and now he showed those strong legs. That's why he's a good kicker. But uh, he turned up, he got some pressure, and just ran out of there and had the presence of mind to get out of bounds with this game. Two announcers in the air. Flood left formation this time, single man to the right. That is Kunkel Bowers will throw again, looking for Graves and incomplete. Almost intercepted by Matt Rashford at the 45 yard line. And Rashford with a nice defensive play. Made the dive to uh, the Flucker pass, and he had another step on that play. He would have the IMT. And he would have a two step down. So he would have the IMT. It was nobody real close, and there was nobody in front of him to stop that play. That'll bring up a second down in 10. But I'll tell you what, I like it a lot because it's high school ball. These kids are coming in a two and three team, an old five team with a minute to go. You'd see them on the pros. They'd be doing the kneeling down thing, going to the locker room. And Blairsville's out here, and they're firing the ball even with a two point lead. They want to try and get more points here in the half. Now they shift all over the place. They shifted into the eye, out of the eye to the pro set. And now Bowers will take the snap from the shotgun. Just two receivers in the pattern, and the pass is complete to John Ivanko. And Ivanko is to the outside to the 30, 25, 20, and finally run out of bounds at the 10 yard line. And Galen Navaki made the touchdown delaying tackle. And there was the old hook and go play. Did you see that that time? Beautiful play. I'll tell you what, Vince, they did it. And all it was simply was a throw to the, uh, I guess, maybe it's tight end James. Short Bowers pass was complete to number 32, Johnny Ivanko. He made the catch and then he pitched it. He pitched it off that pitch. I'm sorry. That's what I thought. Ivanko got the pitch after the catch was made, I'm pretty sure. By Jameson, he made the catch and then the pitch, the old hook and ladder play, and a big pickup for Blairsville. Bowers will throw again, flood right, gets pressure for Twister out of the pocket, dancing to the nine yard line and skips out of bounds there with minute seven to play. A good chance at three points late in the half here. They'll go from the I formation, dual receivers to the right, one man to the left. Graves is in the backfield. Bauer, straight drop, throws over the middle, and the pass is complete. Now to the five yard line to John Ivanko. He was nailed by the right there. Number 32, John Almost a second before the ball got there. But uh, that shows you how tough these kids are for Bloomsville as Ivanko makes a heck of a catch. I mean, he barely had time to think about catching that ball and he was being hit. But he had the presence of mind to hang on. And it's going to be first and goal now. I'm out on the field for a measurement for Blairsville. First and goal for the Bobcats. And taking the head off his Bowers and wide open in the end zone for the touchdown is Mike Jameson. Excellent fake by Bowers. Sweet play because he had everybody in the building for including uh, yours truly. I thought it was just a pullback one. But uh, oh, he took the ball out of a pullback ball with Jameson just kind of on the other side where he didn't know how he was going to play down. He was stuck out there from a blocking position uh, out into the right side of the end zone. He was wide open. Our score right now, Brazil 20, Vincent Carroll 12. Set for the conversion, number 13, Joel Bowers. Into attempt to conversion. The ball is down, the kick is up, and it is straight and true and good. 12, 21, 12, this is like you make a move ball in through your right back. Oh, it's a chess match. I'll see your touchdown. Number 24, and if you're tuned in to hear Blairsville Bobcat for WCMS tonight, you're getting your money's worth and more. Bowers, squib kick along the side, bounces over the head of one man, and it will bounce over Ratchford's head, too. Matt Ratchford finally gets it at the 20-yard line and falls to his knees with 44 seconds to play. A situation there that time where he had the bouncing kick because they don't want to ball the ball in play. play. The ball the ball the ball ball so we'll see what happens. But it bounced over the first set of linemen's the ball heads. Took a bounce much like Tony Kubek had hit him in the throat in the 60 series. He just was rolling and just went straight up in the air. Been over exactly. As Coach Abe would say, that's why they put code. That's why they put the points on the football. <laughs> so you never know which way it'll bounce. Big game, a big part of football, and that time there, the uh, Bishop Carroll kids for a while looked like they didn't uh, remember that it was a kick, and they had to cover that. They were thinking that maybe it was a punt or something, but they have to get on that football. That's a live football for either team. And we got a prevent defense. I'd say a prevent defense. Bowers, the free safety, is at his own 40-yard line. The ball is at the 20. <laughs> Bully. We got four guys 30 yards off the ball. 
will drop back and look to throw. Penalty markers all over the place. Bully flushed flus from the pocket, forced to throw. The pass is in and out of the hands of Sakalas at the 25 yard line. Incomplete at 13 seconds, and we'll check the penalty, Chris. I think the uh, flanker for Bishop Carroll, who would be uh, Jared Knabel, was uh, moving before the play, so I think we're going to have a. Uh, motion type play. He was starting out ahead of him. But talking about that prefense defense, Bowers, the safety, was 65 yards away. The cornerbacks were 55 yards away from the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they were going to let him make the catch and then try and run past him. But I'll tell you what, you know, you talk about that prevent, a lot of time it's uh, what you do is to prevent your team from winning or holding them off because when you got a Jared Knable, you give him a short pass, and you watch how fast he runs, and you're standing back there, sure, you're 50 yards off the Christian ball, but you're flat footed too. Second down and 10 so, for the Huskies. Yeah, but I don't want anybody to get by you, but I don't know if you need to be that far away. But they are not taking any chances here with a 21 to 12 lead with 13 seconds to go in the first half. We have an official's timeout, Chris, and I'm not really sure why. Yeah. Looks to be the ribs or the no. sternum. No, I don't think they might be. I think he might have been trying to get that to fix without having to come out of the game. But 13 seconds to go. Bowley, the back split behind him. Dual receivers. Bowley, straight drop, looks to throw. It's a blitz by the Bobcats. Bowley, of course, from the pocket. Across the line of scrimmage and out of bounds at the 22-yard line in front of Mark Swanson with six seconds to go. Yeah, that was an equipment problem. He uh, had some problems, Jared Canable, with uh, the... Pick up a three yards on the play. Everything's Shoulder pads. pads. That's it. The shoestring had come untied to hold the shoulder pads together. He was trying to get a fix so he could stay in the game, but he's going to finish out the first half on the sideline. Now we've got six seconds to go. The super duper prevent defense. And of course, Jared Knable got us on the board with a 75 yard touchdown run for the Huskies. Third down and seven from the 21 yard line. Bowley, straight back, will throw. One man in the pattern, that is Matt Rashford. The ball is up and incomplete, and it was up for grabs. Yeah, the flag on the play, we do have one second still left in the half, and I'll tell you what, if that pass isn't wobbly, Robbie Graves may take that thing off and go. Because he had, the, no, I guess it was Mike Jamison. Mike right, Jamison. that thing off, because he saw the thing hanging up there, and it hadn't died as short as it did. I think he was ready to step in front of the intended receiver and take that thing down the right sideline. They're talking to the Bobcats, which indicates that the Huskies are guilty of an infraction. With one tick showing on the clock. Well, do you push him back and make him play third down with one second left, or you decline a penalty and make it fourth down with one second left? And that's what they're doing. They're saying it's fourth down, go ahead and punt the ball. Well, now they're going to take the penalty and the down? Did he step over the line of scrimmage when he threw it, maybe? I didn't see the preliminary indication. The referee didn't give it. Now third down and 17 for the Huskies. Third down and 17. Still third down. I was watching the, the yard and, marker man, and he switched it to fourth down. And now the Huskies ask for a timeout. One second to go in the first half. They trail 21 to 12 in third and 17 on their nine. Break the huddle. See the old 90-yard play pulled out of the hat here, but uh, I don't know what they're going to do. We'll see what they do on the timeout. They're throwing for Ratchford Long. The ball is up there. It's a jump ball, and it is incomplete at the 40-yard yard line. Drawing the coverage was Eric Merrill Huskies as well. Chris and I will be back with the review of the first half right after this. Tony Dove is set to kick off. Dropping back is Chuck Whitfield, Graves, and Ivanko. Dumb kicks the ball. Line drive kick. Drives Graves back to the five. Out to the 10, 15, 20, has a seam, 25, 30, slips the tackle, and out to the 37-yard line before a host of Bishop Carroll Huskies bring him down, leaving the Chargers, Joe Galatio. And also in on the stop was Ben Stohan. Tackle made by Brian McAvoy and Ben Stohan for Bishop Carroll. Yeah, looks like Graves is going to line up the usual flank. He's going to line up in halfback position. So Eric Williams is playing defense. He's off there on the offensive side of the ball. At least that's going the ball game for uh, Blairsville. He's the normal halfback for them. But Graves is going to find job in his place. Full house backfield, no receivers. Give the ball to Swanson off left tackle. Swanson spins away from the tackle and is out to the 48 yard line, still on his feet. And finally, tumbled to the ground by Kevin Matuchenbach. Look at that Max Suey look to him. Graves just, or I'm sorry, Swanson just 
Went up to the left side, and uh, he stays pretty much between the tackles and picked up some yardage, but he got hit three or four times, but just kept the legs turning, and Bishop Carroll had to gang tackle to get him down, and big 12-yard pickup for the first down. Maybe 12 and a half, first and 10, the ball just inside Husky territory at 11.17 to go. Full house backfield now. And we have some movement in the line. We'll see what happens. But again, Chris, they lined up a big man in the backfield. That was uh, J.W. Hauser coming in motion from the from the halfback position. Yeah, he's uh, he's a lineman for number six from six. And uh, they're using him as kind of like the H-back of the Washington Redskins, sending him in motion. Just uh, so that by the time the ball snapped, he's just right offside the, the outside of the tackle. But uh, unfortunately. I guess the Bishop Carroll jumped offside. Bishop there. Carroll violated the neutral zone when they saw him move, so it'll be first and five from the 44 for the Bobcats. They are on the move again. Send Hauser in motion again. Give the ball to Grays, following Hauser's block, turns the corner and is brought down on the far side after picking up three down to the 43 yard line. And running him down was Galen Novotny. And there's a situation there again, you're going wide. It's it's vitally important, I think, on defense, the hardest position to play is cornerback. You've got to cover them receivers, but you've also got to realize immediately that they're running. You've got to keep the man, you've got to contain him, keep him inside. You can't let him get outside. Jim Garvin, the six foot, 220 pound center, leads the hus rather leads the Bobcats out of the huddle. Two receivers to the near side, one to the far side, out of the out, Bowers will throw. Plenty of time. Now it breaks down and Bowers runs. It is down to the 34-yard line where he slides at the feet of Greg Werfel. I think he reminds me of. He's got quick little feet, that Bowers and uh, Fran Tarkin. Oh, yeah, he's a shorter type quarterback, but just the way he gets those feet in motion in a hurry, and he finds the opening, picks up the first down running the football. He has a strong enough arm. He's doing a nice job throwing, but uh, was on the move again. First and 10, he picks up the first down at the 35 yard line. Flood right formation, Bowers will throw again. Getting time, throws over the middle. Graves has the catch on one knee at the 25 yard line, just in front of Brian Sakalis. And I, again, I, I am very impressed with those who the balance. They come out, they run a couple plays, and they start to throw in. And, uh, nice pattern run that time by Graves. Great pass protection by the offensive line from Blairsville, and Bowers just found his receiver and laid it in there. On the move again. Call it third down and two from the 26 yard line. They need to get to the 24. Nine minutes and eight seconds to go. The Bobcats enjoying a 21 to 12 lead. Full house backfield. The give is to Swanson. He's hit in the backfield, spins off, spins ahead across the 25 yard line. That should be good enough for the first down. Chris Smith finally made the tackle. But Greg Wurlfell, I hope I didn't butcher his name too much, Greg had, a, had him in the backfield. And he just, uh, as he said, Swanson spun out of it for the, well, not the first down, but for the positive yardage. But if Wurlfell can make that tackle, he actually throws him for about a three or four yard loss. And that's where you teach the guys, you gotta wrap a hand around him. Can't just hit him and knock him over. You've gotta hand, hand tackle these guys. They mark him with a left footed spot just shy of the 25 yard line. So it'll be about a half a foot short of the first down. Had a uniform problem there, but uh, corrected it quickly and keeping the clock moving. Third down and one. The Bobcats will send two flankers to the far side and run out of the eye formation. Graves is the tailback, Swanson is the inback. Give to Swanson, off right tackle. He has the first down, spinning down to the 22 yard line in the hands of Brian Sakalis. And I. I think right now the big thing for the Blairsville uh, Bobcat offense is they're putting to uh, use their big center. Six foot, 220 pound senior Jimmy Garvin is just starting to punch some holes. They're running right over the center. Again, as we said, all five of the offensive Blairsville linemen for Blairsville over the 200 mark. And they may be wearing down this smaller uh, Bishop Carroll offense. The other thing is Bishop Carroll's got eight guys going both ways and Blairsville, I noticed, has had a lot more different people playing on each side of the ball. So they've got to be a little bit fresher as well. They shift into the pro set. Graves goes in motion to the far side, and we've got people moving everywhere. Bowers slips the tackle, scrambling for his life, throws into the end zone. Graves has it for a touchdown. But we know this one's coming back because the flank on the far side had a
got a better jump for Secretary. Yeah, Graves is coming in motion one way, and Mike uh, Jamison, the tight end, or the, the left wide receiver, he, he was moving too. He stepped over the line. So another big play by Blairsville. That's two now. The one they had the long catch that was called back. It wasn't a touchdown, but it was down to about the five-yard line. That was called back in the first half. Now a touchdown play as uh, Bowers again scrambled out and threw to his wide open Graves. That one comes back as well. And Graves was wide, wide open. Bowers slipped the tackle in the backfield and was able to make something happen. And very impressed. He's, he's, a, he's not a tall quarterback. He only goes to 5'8", according to the program. I don't, but I don't think he's there. He may be 5'8", if they got the elevator spikes on him. But uh, the way he gets out of the pocket and then is able to keep his composure and find a receiver. A lot of times you see a young kid, when he has to scream out of the pocket, all he's thinking about doing is running upfield. And Bowers uh, did a nice job to find the receiver that time. The penalty moves it to the 28, first and 15. Bowers on the drop play. Graves, huge hole. The referee finally trips him up. That was the original line of screens, the 21 yard line. And it's a good thing the referee was there or he would have gone mo much more. And again, the thing that uh, really gets me is the fact there's another play that I don't think we saw the entire first half, the draw play to Graves. And you gotta wonder how many plays they got in their playbook. And the Airfields come out with a lot of different looks and they ran it out of the shotgun. I don't know if Bubby would be able to take all this in. <laughs> Too complicated, got a simple play. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, don't pick on Bobby. Two men split to the left, one to the right, out of the eye formation. Bowers, barking signal, straight back, he'll throw out into the flat. Has his man there, that is John Ivanko, and Ivanko is finally wrestled down at the 11-yard line. Coming over to make the stop was Sean Height, and he is about a yard shy of the first down, Chris. All these different looks by uh, Blairsville on offense has got uh, Bishop Carroll a bit confused, and their cornerbacks that time, Matt Ratchford, was playing was off the line. The Bowers two. noticed it immediately and just threw a, Johnny uh, just a turn Third and throw to the man. All the receiver did was like go a yard downfield, turn around and wait for the ball, and he caught the ball only a yard off the line of scrimmage and then made the rest up by running. Another nice play. They'll break the huddle again from the pro set. Put a man in the slot to the near side. Bauer, straight ahead keeper, and depending on where he's spotted, he might have the first down. Pushed back by Bryant Sakalistan, a host of Bishop Carroll Huskies, but we'll have to see where they mark the ball, and they give him his forward progress. It's a first down at the 11-yard line for the Blairsville Bobcats, and they have eaten just about six minutes off the clock. And just about to say, 12-minute quarters, and this is the thing, if you're on the Bishop's Carroll side of the ball, this is not the thing you wanted, a long, sustained drive. They're reading up half the third quarter. They're already down <laughs> as it is. But on the Blairsville side of the ball, you got to be really excited because you're throwing when you have to, and you're running the rest of the time. You're taking down the clock, and you're driving down the floor. Bowers brings them out of the huddle in the eye formation. They said Kunkel is a flanker to the far side. Jamison, the flanker to the near side. The pitch comes to Graves on the near side. Graves needs a block, doesn't get it. And is dropped at the line of scrimmage. Coming up to make the tackle was Matt Rashford. And he may have even lost the yard, Chris. Matt Rashford for Bishop Carroll. And uh, getting a little heated here now. Matt Rashford with a fine play that time. And there's a situation. Rashford was playing the left cornerback. And it's uh, some, again, it's what I said, cornerback position. He's got to play the receiver, but he's also got to play that run. He's got to keep containment. He just held his ground there, would not be blocked. And Graves ran right to him, and he made the tackle. Second down and 11, 5.15 to go. The Bobcats have had the ball the entire quarter. Bowers to Jamison on the quick hitter, and Jamison has the ball down around the five yard line. Before Greg Wilford breaks him down, and that's the same play they got the touchdown on. Exactly, that play's open a lot, and you know why that's open? Because they've got Graves playing halfback, and uh, the, all that speed, they're running the ball wide, and when you're running wide, linebackers are thinking wide, and that's opening up the middle of the field. So again, a lot of credit to the Blairsville coaching staff to realize that they're spreading them out with the, with the wide runs, and opening up the middle of the field for them, and that's an ineffective play that's far tonight. Third down and four from the five. They can get a first down without getting into the end zone. Three men in the backfield. Huskies get back. They almost jumped offside. Swanson has it, and he's over for a touchdown. Mark Swanson, a five-yard touchdown run, and the Blairsville Bobcats still are on the board again, Chris. 
And a fine executed play that time on 12 tackles. Swanson takes it in and they get the touchdown. It was just an off tackle play. And I think the big uh, Blairsville lineman just wore down Bishop Carroll on that drive. Another score, and as we said, coming in to start the third quarter, this was going to be a key drive for them. And they ate up seven minutes and 33 seconds of the third quarter as they march it down the field for the score. Bowers will attempt the extra point now. The ball is down. Bowers' kick is up and out of the stadium. Bishop Carroll, 12. Chris and I will be right back. 3185. The winner may collect their game ball at the conclusion of tonight's ball game. Bowers will kick it off for the Bobcats. Line drive kick and it will come down to Matt Ratchford at the 10. Kick off. Across the 15, 20, 20 25. Has the seam up the middle to the 30. And finally tripped up at the 31 yard line. Coming up to make the stop was Bill Lenhart returning to the game. He makes the stop, and that's where they'll put it in play. First and 10 at their own 30-yard line. And this reminder, you're listening to 1480 WCNS Latrobe Greensburg, your home of high school football and the National League Eastern Division Pittsburgh Pirates. That's right. And also the Once again, the winning number for tonight's game ball. Can they score? The big question for tomorrow. We we'll have the Steeler broadcast. Four, one, three, three, one, eight, five. From the wishbone formation. Foley to Sakalas, breaks the tackle into the open field and all the way out to the 39 yard line before he is finally wrapped up on the play. And coming up to make the stop for the Blairsville Bobcats from his linebacker. Tackle made by Steve Lee. Steve Lee. And Johnny Banco. Well, the situation now is they're down by nine yards on the play, 16 points. Down two touchdowns. So that's the two touchdowns and two extra point conversions just to tie it. And with the three and a half to go in the third quarter, they got to put something together here. But I think that Bishop Carroll's going to have to think about throwing the football a little bit more if they want to get back in this game. Bowling on a counter play, gives it to Canaveral. Canaveral on the outside, breaks the tackle, and is all the way down to the 44 yard line. Finally, he gets out of bounds by John Ivanko, but hold on, we've got a penalty flag. And it's against Blairsville, it's going to be a personal foul and illegal head slap. I don't think. Definitely, if they don't tap down, they'll take it down because that was a, a 15 yards, 16 yards. Uh, depending on where it happened, Chris, it, it, it could be. If it's a personal foul, now that's added on as well. <coughs> it is a personal foul, it's tacked on. That's 15 more, and they're going to go back to the 30 yard line with it. The signal was defensive holding, but. I really believe it was a hit slap. The ball down to the anyway, the ball has moved down to the 34-yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats with 3.05 to play. And it's time for the Huskies to make the counter move in the end game of chess. That's right. We'll see your touchdown and see if we can raise you one here. Sakalas, right tackle, good running room down to the 31-yard line where he goes down in the arms of Mark Swanson. Ryan Sakalas with the carry. despite being down by the 16th, we're staying with their bread and butter, the Austin game. Uh, out of the wishbone attack. And they're getting positive yardages, but again, the uh, clock on the side of Blairsville right now. We got a player with a helmet from the official timeout. Time time and uh, this just in from Fenway Park in Boston, the American League game one of the American League Championship Series in the second inning, no score. What a matchup. Roger Clemens and, and Dave Stewart. Stewart. You gotta Stewart. wonder Clemens how hard that shoulder's gonna hold up. They were speculating because if it goes seven, they were saying about games one, four, and seven, but I don't know if the shoulder can hold up three games one like that. Definitely decided underdogs. So I got I got a root for the Red Sox, but uh, boy, oh boy, so much talent on that Oakland A's team. Just got to wonder. Got a vested interest in the Red Sox. Dom off right tackle, slips the tackle, and gets down to the 29-yard line before he is finally ridden down on the play. So that's where they'll put it in play. Chris Unkefer. Tackle made by Chris Unkefer for Blairsville. Unkefer for body slamming. <laughs> so you're stopped here, and now you're going back this way. Watch. You threw him backwards. But third and five for the Huskies. A couple of yard pickup. But again, it's a third and five situation, and uh, with under two minutes to go in the third quarter, they definitely need to keep this drive sustained if they have any hopes of getting back in the ball game. As this girl has thus far. <laughs> Move the ball well in this drive. We'll see what happens on this third and five. Third and five from the wishbone. 
Foley sets his team, fakes it, straight drop, looking to throw, good time, now forced from the pocket, and finally sacked. Greg Kunkel yeah, makes the sack at the 31-yard line. That'll bring up a fourth down, but trailing by 16 points. We are sure that the Huskies will go for it. Yeah, Kunkel with a nice play, and also Brian Farrow got in there. They got good pressure, not the greatest decision by Dan Bowley that time. Uh, I think if he'd have dropped a little bit farther, he could have taken a little more time to look. But, uh, when you got guys bearing down at you like that, uh, it's a lot different ball game than when you're just warming up in practice. So we'll see what happens here on the fourth and long. Fourth and eight from the wishbone again. Sakalas there, they fake the Sakalas, give it to Canable, and this time they do not fool the Blairsville Bobcats. Brian Farah comes up from his left guard position to drop Kunkel or Evan Canable in the backfield all the way back at the 37 yard line. That's where the Bobcats will put it in play, first and 10, with 50 seconds to go in the third period. Interesting play call on a fourth and nine. They stay with the bone and try and run it out of there in Blairsville. It was a nice uh, play that time. To pick it up. Oh, it it down, yard the line. At the very last second. That is Greg Kunkel. He's just going to kind of pick it up as he goes along. They've got a lonesome end out there. Chris John Ivanko hit in the corner. And the give is the Graves. He slips the tackle into the secondary. And Novotny saves the touchdown at the 49 yard line, wrestling him down by the jersey. And he'll hide the guy in the sideline maneuver but they still ran it anyway and they got positive yardage. I'd say positive yardage, 20 yards on the carry. Graves over the 100 yard mark for the evening. And as we said earlier, Blairsville has had a lot of different guys playing offense and defense. They've been able to not have to, First they've been Blair able to put two. Bishop Carroll's using guys on both sides of the ball and I think it's starting to take its toll now, they're getting a little bit tired. The final play of the fourth quarter has Swanson, or rather the third quarter has Swanson Carry going right off the gut across the 45 to the Bishop Carroll 44 where Sakalis will bring him down. And that's it, the eighth the Bishop Carroll Huskies, 12, 44 Bill yard line. Lundsville has uh, just come out and established themselves with a long seven and a half minute drive in the third quarter to put another touchdown on and now I think they're looking to just dice this thing away for the fourth quarter. I formation, dual receivers to the right. Fake the Graves, Bowers will throw. All kinds of time going over the middle and he's got a man wide open and John Ivanko can't hold the pass at the five yard line. And a nice arm by Bowers, 50 yards in the air, Chris. I'll tell you what, it took a long time for that play to develop. Blairsville gave him all kind of protection. Landhart, Shirley, uh, Gavin, Uncaper, and Farrell, the offensive linemen, just gave him all kind of time. They faked it. He had a good five, six seconds back here, and he waited for Vancho to run the run the long play. It was just a matter of Vancho stopped to look for the ball, and when he stopped, he started going back over his head farther, and he tried to reach over the wrong shoulder and couldn't make the catch. Back. Flood right formation, Bowers will roll that way on third and seven, gets pressure, forced from the pocket in the arms of the defender, he throws incomplete, looking for Jamison near the first down flag. Joel Bowers pass attempt to Mike Jamison, Jamison thought he was going to run there, so he stopped uh, going to his door, and then all of a sudden the ball was coming at him, and he didn't have enough time to react and try and make a catch. So I guess it's what, fourth down? Hunt this ball out of here maybe? Fourth Bowers down and seven him in deep. from the 44-yard line of the Huskies. Um, but I'll tell you, I'm really impressed with Blairsville. You know, it's just a matter of finishing the play. Canable drops back. Bowers, line drive kick off the side of his foot. But it takes a good Blairsville bounce and goes out of bounds near the five-yard line. That thing hit just inside. Out of bounds at the Bishop Carroll 11 yard line. First and 10 for the Huskies. Okay. No bumper, no bumper. No. no bumper. Just one to one. What should we go 60 yards? Hand off to Jared Knabel. On the first play from scrimmage, Jared Knabel takes the ball out to the 14, the 15 yard line of the Bishop Carroll Huskies. Give him five, make it second and five, Chris. 
Well, that looked like the play they sprung for the touchdown the first play, but now uh, Blairsville wise to that play and they're not uh, allowing that. The cornerbacks are keeping him in. They're, they're doing the containment as they're supposed to, and he had to cut it back inside, so it was only a two or three yard gain. Well, a five yard gain, actually. They spread the wishbone out a little bit, put two men in the slot to the far side. Boley will give the ball to Dumb. And Dumb slips the tackle and is nailed at the 20 yard line. Coming over to make the stop was Mark Swanson. And I mean, he leveled him. He leveled him, and that. Robert Gray is also in there. And they're doing some pretty hard tackles. Right Dumb comes limping off and holding his arm gingerly at the same time. No gain, making third and five for the Huskies at 10 33 in the final period. And the Blairsville Bobcats making the most of their WCNS debut. This is when you like to play deep. You got a 16 point lead in the fourth quarter. You like to go out there and just because you know you can gamble a little bit and be nuts. And even if you get burned for a big uh, first down or something, you still got the big lead. Wishbone, two men in the slot. Boley to Sakalis. Sakalis across the 20 yard line and out near the 21. He's close to a first down, but I believe about a yard shy, Chris. So, oh, wait, he might have a penalty of some sort. Now they move the sticks for the first down. Oh, okay, they give him the first down. So. Made the five yards, and that's a big play for them right now because down by 16, they need to get a couple of drives going, uh, a couple of first downs going here. But clock is now their enemy. Under 10 minutes to go in the ball game, but players will give them the four or five yard runs all night now. Oh, that's the Bishop Carroll 24 yard line. They have the lead. They have to put in their own end right now. First and 10 from the 25. Inside handoff, Knavel, and Knavel is up to the 29 yard line. Derek Knavel with the carry for Bishop Carroll. We don't have like the, the sizes or the weights of the, the Bishop Carroll linemen. Looks like a couple of their guys got some pretty decent size, but we know that Blairsville's got most of their guys up around the 200 pound line. Six yards and again, as I was four, stated earlier, a lot of the Bishop Carroll guys have to go both ways. They're trying to run that ball inside like that. You gotta give the Bishop Carroll kids a lot of credit because they're going up against bigger guys. They're playing both ways, and uh, they're still being able to get five, six yards on a pop here in this running game up the middle. Bill Lenhart makes the stop there. It'll be second down and five. This is a Ratsford, and Ratsford around the corner and across the 30-yard line out to the 34-yard line where he is brought down in the arms of Brian Farrah. Both teams spread it there, both still. Bishop Carroll still running with a lot of authority right now, still running, still playing very hard. Blairsville, as we said, they're really sticking it now on defense. They're going, uh, they're going at it, they're going to get them. As the coach would say, they're going to get them. They're going to get them. And the Huskies move the sticks again, out at the 34 yard line, first down. And Blairsville timeout. Blairsville will elect to call a timeout. Chris and I will step out as well. First and 10, the Bishop Carroll Huskies put the ball in play from their own 34 yard line. They give us to the halfback, Sakalis. And Sakalis is out to the 37 yard line before a host of Blairsville Bobcats bring him down. Coming up to make the stop again is Brian Farrah. Bowley leads them out of huddle again at second and eight. Here's the ball to Rashford, and Rashford is across the 35, or rather across the 40 yard line, and ridden out of bounds at the 41 yard line. But they're going to say he stayed in, but he's going to be Approaching the eight minute mark. And the minute now by 16, they're not putting the ball in the air, so Bishop Carroll definitely a running squad. Right now they're just in a situation where they're trying to establish a drive. Get a little bit of confidence back. But, uh, Mr. Clark is not their favorite. Well, now they've got some disorganization. They'll take a timeout. Chris and I will step out as well. 7.45 to go. Blair's up. They had a race now. But it's a big touchdown ball. Foley gives the ball to Knable, and Knable has the first down. Out across the 45 to the 47 yard line. And the Huskies mounting a drive with 7.40 to go, Chris. Well, yeah, they're mounting a drive. And, uh, that's all.
all well and good, but uh, if you're trying to get back to the ball, you got to throw the football. Like we said earlier, boys will let them run for four or five yards at a time because there's only seven and a half minutes to go in the game, and, they need and they're down by 16 points. They'll put one receiver to the far side, a man on the slot to the near side, dual receivers for Bowley at first and 10 on the 45, and he will throw. Getting pressure from the weak side, he's hit as he throws it, and the pass is incomplete. They were looking for Jared Knabel at the 15-yard line, but he was hammered coming over from the far side to make the play for the Roseville Bobcats and putting very good pressure on. But the only good thing about that play was the fact that he was left-handed, and so he was able to see. If he'd have been right-handed, he'd have been blindsided. He really could have got hurt in that. I mean, not to, a lot of solace to take in the fact that he definitely had to hurry that throw, and he was a good 10, 15 yards ahead of his man, but there was nothing else he could do because if he waited for the man to finish the pattern, he would have never got the throw off. Greg Kapitoski put on the pressure and forced Bully to get rid of it before he wanted to. This is Dumb on the wing back counter, and he is tripped up behind the line of scrimmage at the 45-yard line by Brian Farrell. That'll bring up a third down and 11. Well, they'll give him forward progress now, maybe third down and 10. This is a security guy running across the field. I thought maybe we had a flasher, but no, it's one of the security guys taking a shortcut. Bully puts Dumb in the slot to the far side. A Rashford in the near side and dual backs. Works out the signal, sets his team. Here's a blitz by Blairsville. Quick hitter over the middle. He got Switzler. Switzler fumbles the ball at the 30-yard line. And at the 30, or rather at the 36-yard line and falling on it on the at the 34-yard line Bill Lenhard. is Bill Lenhard, and he makes the fumble recovery, and that ends the drive. Uh, I'll tell you, the man made a beautiful catch that time. They ran that uh, tight end quick hitter that uh, Blairsville's used for a touchdown in a couple of games. They ran about the same thing, and he really had to reach out to make the catch. And it was a beautiful catch, and then he was going to tuck it away to run with it, and that's when he coughed it up. And on the other side of the ball, give him a lot of credit. He's on the lineman. He got back to try and help make the tackle and was able to recover the fumble as he was trailing on that play. High formation. Bernie Pinos has the ball, and Pinos is brought down behind the line of scrimmage. Coming up is Brian Sakalas to make the tackle, and that means that Rob Graves is finished for the evening. Now, it's composed against to earn his money as he tries to figure out all these new white shirts coming in the game. Just when you put Rob Graves out of the game, he comes running back in. Rob Graves may not be done. Four-yard line of play, second 14. See, radio. somebody's got a portable radio down there. They heard you say that. Hey, put that kid back in. We'll show him. We thought maybe he had retired for the evening. But no. I formation. Receivers to either side. Graves is back at tailback. Graves has the ball on a delay. Graves with a huge hole, and he slips down at the 34-yard line. And then he's shy of the first down, but Graves had some running room if he had to slip. I think he gave him, he out juked himself. He was uh, he had a hole, and I think if he'd have kept it and went outside with it, he'd have picked up some uh, big yardage. When he tried to cut it back inside, I think he thought he could uh, take off with it up the middle. And when he tried to cut back inside, he slipped and kind of brought himself down, although there wasn't a man there to help make the tackle. The clock creeps its way to dusty death. Four minutes and 57 seconds to go out of the eye formation. And this is Penis throwing from the shotgun formation, and Penis' pass is incomplete. Well, Penis showing a very strong arm for just a sophomore. The pass, is, the pass is incomplete. Now they tell you Pinus is the way that is going. Oh, Pinus, our apologies there. We were informed incorrectly. Pinus will come out, and Bowers will return. Not the first mistake we've made. For yourself. That'll be the last mistake we've made. <laughs> Bowers is in punt formation at fourth and ten. Set to punt. Four players go to Bowers. 44, fourth down, fourth quarter. Oh, he's got a strong leg. And, and Sakalas takes the ball at the 32 yard line. It's snowed Brian under them, but hold on because Bowers was run into. We'll see, Chris. This yep. is important whether they call roughing or running in. Because, kicking the leg means. because if it's running into the kicker, it's five yards and not a first down in high school football. If it is roughing, 
Well, what's the leg kick? It's the same signal. We'll just have to wait and see. It's like oh. the face mask. It's an either or. It's an either or. Okay. If it's the five yarder, it is not a first down. If it is the 15, it is a first down. Well, I'll tell you what, he got off a beautiful kick, so I don't know. It's, it's the big one. It's the big no. one. Yeah, it's the big one. It's the big one, Elizabeth. 15 yards all the way out to the 49 yard line. This is it. We're getting punch happy now. Uh, out to the 49 yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats. They get the ball back, and they'll go first and 10 there. And that probably. We'll do it. We'll do it for the ball game with 4.31 to go. But we really shouldn't say that with the way that the scoring is coming bunches here, you never know. And one big play type score, yeah. Bowers to Graves, slips a tackle to the outside, across the 40, and down to the 36 yard line before Dan Bowley wrestles him down. And Bowley saved the touchdown again. Rashford also in on the tackle, 28 to 12. The Bobcats enjoying the lead. A lead they took with six minutes to go in the game, first in the first 10, quarter. From the 35 yard line, this is Swanson. And Swanson is down to the 31 yard line. Brought down on the play by Jim Nagel. Carrier with Mark Swanson for oh, Yeah, about 138 yards prior to that last play. And Ryan Collins for Richard Carroll. Swanson might have three yards on the play, second and seven for Three and Carroll. a half to go, second and seven. Staying pretty much with the first teamers here. Bowers fakes the pitch, cuts it up across the 30, 20 yard line, 19, he's run out of bounds. And a late hit flag on, I believe it's gonna be Dan Bowley who'll be called for that at the 10 yard line. And in all fairness to Bowley, he looked like he was trying to let up and he just stumbled a little bit and ran into Bowers who had gone out of bounds. But that uh, is the call, personal foul. That's gonna make that thing work down about the five yard half, yard, half yardage will take you probably down to the 10. Oh, let's go outside the 20 though. Yeah, we're right down to about the 10 yard line. 319 to go, 28 to 12, Bobcats leading. Yeah, we still got pretty much the dirty jerseys in there for Blairsville. They haven't been used to any of their bench. They haven't had a real big bench to begin with, but they do have six players on the roster. Roughing, unnecessary roughness to call that'll put it first and goal just outside the 10, which means the Bobcats can get a first down without scoring. The backs are split behind Bowers. Gives to Swanson. Swanson looking for his full third touchdown. Tries to turn the corner and stringing the play out very nicely is Jared Knabel. And he runs him out of bounds. And there is an injured Blairsville Bobcat on the field. Chris and I will check the injury and be right back. You see that, especially when you got a big lead late in the game. That's why you, you go to the second center and you got a lead. They're still in there. Dual receivers to the right. Bowers rolling that way. He can run it in if he wants. He'll throw to the back of the end zone. And he has a receiver for the touchdown. And catching the touchdown pass is Greg Kunkel. And then Kunkel spikes the ball. That will draw a penalty. But it's a touchdown for Kunkel and the Blairs will not catch. That feels excitement getting the best of him. Well, that might have been his first in the year, maybe, but uh, when Spike the football and in uh, high school and uh, college high school ball, that is a no no. Not Spike the football. And that's going to cost him. Uh, I mean, the touchdown is good for sure, but that's going to cost him. 15? A nine yard well, touchdown pass. From Joel Bowers is complete to Greg Bowers Kunkel. is going to have about a 40-yard, a 35-yard extra point, point for Bowers. The ball is down. Bowers' kick is up. And if it's straight, it's good. And I mean, it is good by about 35. Three minutes, six seconds to go. 35. Uh, Joel Bowers. And, and only need two or three points to win. They know now. Well, they probably knew it anyway, I'm sure. But they know they can. Ryan Sakalas will take it at the 5, 10, 15, 20, across the 20, 25 to the 30. And out to the 36-yard line before he finally goes down. 
boy, oh boy, I'm just foul. Tackle made by Bill Lenhart. makes the tackle, but Chris, the thing I love is about both teams able to return kickoffs well tonight. Yes, we do, and we've got holding against the um, Bishop, Carroll Bishop Carroll Huskies. Dang. No After score and no play. hits, Chris. Yes. Stewart versus Clemens, and they're both shutting down thus far. Yeah, pretty much had to expect that. A healthy Clemens. Bowley's pass is incomplete on the near side, and they call it complete. Calling it in was Jared Knable, and I mean, he was a good two yards out of bounds when he made that catch, Chris. Well, you know what happened? He juggled the ball. I think the referee was showing the tape. I've seen if he got his feet down, that he stopped watching. He didn't have his fingers on the ball in bounds, but he never had control of it until he got out of bounds. So, Devin Cruz got a fine yards job tonight. To play, second, and two. second down and two from the 34-yard line. They need to get to the 36. 2.53 to go in the ball game. Blairsville up comfortably 35 to 12 and they have been explosive on offense using Rob Graves as the fuse to light the dynamite. Just uh, something we haven't even uh, mentioned. The game is about a of the first now we got it. And Bowley is dropped from the weak side all the way back to the 31 yard line and coming in on excellent weak side pressure there for the vicious Carroll or for the um, there's a little bobcats with Jason Adderley. Yeah, Bowley tackling in his own backfield, number 28. But uh, the point I was alluding to is the Bishop uh, Blairsville uh, with the win tonight will even their record at three and three, and that will equal all of last year's output for wins. So, and impressive. They looked, they've looked very Third good. Three games to go in the Carroll. regular season uh, for this year for the Blairsville squad. You gotta figure they can put uh, a couple more wins under their belt. So it's improvement over last year, and that's what you like to do. You like to build on it year to year, and so. Uh, Blairsville's got themselves going well. Bishop Carroll, on the other hand, they're going to drop to 0-6, but uh, they've done some good things. They're a young squad, and, and uh, I'm sure they'll continue to work the kinks off, and eventually uh, they should be able to get themselves right. Again. Third and four, Novotny will drop straight back. Good time, left-handed pass across the middle and incomplete. He was looking for Ben Stohan at the 45-yard line, and the pass was underthrown, but Stohan was open. Dan Bowley's pass attempt incomplete. Now, fourth down and four. That'll bring up a fourth down and four, and we're sure that Bowley will go for it. A minute 53 to play. They will break the huddle. And uh, we were coming over, Blairsville has gone to all the white jerseys. They have uh, none of the regulars in there now. They're letting the kids get a chance to play here late in the fourth quarter. And make you earn your money. Bowley inside handoff to Sakalis, and that doesn't fool anyone. He is dropped into line of scrimmage by Sikalis Mike Sigafos. A huge Mike Sigafos, I might Tackle made by Ryan Morningstar. For Mike Sigafos is a junior? No, he's a sophomore. And according to the program, he is six foot three, two hundred seventy-eight pounds. That's he's a lot of sophomores. Big. big. Blairsville will call timeout. A minute for three yard line. Stuff happens. First and 10 for Blairsville, Greg Persichetti takes the snap and gives it to Pinos, and Pinos is out to the 35 yard line. All kinds of flags on that play. And with well, a lot of youngsters in there, the you can expect stuff like yeah, somebody moving before they're supposed to. I'm sure. But uh, an update from Fenway Park in Boston, Wade Boggs is in there for Blairsville. I mean, clean white jerseys. They've gone to the uh, second and third stringers now, giving all the kids a chance to play here as the clock winds down. Persichetti pitches the ball back and snowed under at the 38-yard line is Jason Adderley. And coming up to make the stop was Brian Sakalis. And now we've got a whistle and a timeout called by the Bishop Carroll Huskies. With we are back at Memorial Field and the Blairsville Bobcats have the ball at third down and long. Hannes is back to pass, throwing over the middle and the pass is incomplete. He was looking for Chuck Whitfield over the middle. Bernie Pinus' pass attempt is incomplete. Memorial Field and Evansville. Now fourth down and 15. Well, I said trail. No, you said Memorial Field. I formation and now Persichetti is the quarterback. Quarterback by committee. The handoff is to the first back through and he is stopped for no gain at all. Easiest way to run the plays in. Tell the quarterback to play and uh, he can bring it in and the other quarterback can play. Mike Clausen on the carry, he's brought down by Latchford. And so the Bishop Carroll Huskies are held. They'll take over with a minute seven to go. 
The Rockettes performing down to our right. No gain on the play, Bishop Carroll takes over. <laughs> First and 10, we are under a minute. Bowley is still the quarterback. It's a flood right formation. Bowley will throw, but it's a team portrait of Blairsville's defense. And Bowley throws it out of bounds, and the referee is the closest man. That will be intentional grounding. And that carries Blossom down, Chris. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. But he had a lot of pressure that time, and, and the kid's a little bit frustrated right now. And he just uh, the blocking was to the right, he rolled to the left, and it was a team portrait of the Blairsville front line. But you know, as bad as things were there, they're getting bad now because he's coming to the sidelines. And <laughs> you hate to go over to a coach. It's been a frustrating night for the guys. And I think they've given a good effort. And I'll tell you what, until like starting the fourth quarter, they were still really in this. It was that one drive that finally put it away, but uh, these teams are pretty evenly matched at the uh, halftime. That's a 15 yard penalty and loss of down, takes the ball all the way back to the 22 yard line. Make it now second down and 25. And the new quarterback is Galen Novotny with a flood right formation. Novotny straight back, big rush, looks to throw, slant out pattern, and he has his man complete to Jared Knable. And Knable is out to the 45 yard line. We'll see where they squat it. Where he is finally run out of bounds by Greg Kersher. He came out of bounds that time. He being uh, Knable. And there's uh, with a lot of the youngsters in the game. Nobody picked him up, and he had a lot of room and space. And he had a nice pass and picked up a lot of yards. But Blairsville is just hustling in a lot of guys letting him play right now. First and 10, flood right formation, lone man to the left. Novotny will throw again, straight back. Blairsville blitz, here's the pass. And Knievel hauls it in again at the 41 yard line of the Blairsville Bobcats with 37 seconds to go. And running him out of bounds was Spiaggi. There's a situation there with a the big lead. You usually see the prevent, but with all the youngsters in there, they only had three defensive backs and like eight linebackers. And so Bishop Carroll had like six receivers against three defensive backs. And there's a situation here they were just trying to stop them. Blitz again, Lavatney splits the tackle, looking for Dumb, and the pass is too short and incomplete. With 31 pass. seconds to go. Possible score. Second and 10, the ball on the 40. One yard line, Novotny to throw, it's a blitz. He skips around a man, throws, and incomplete. Was looking for Dumb again at the 31 yard line, and Dumb slips down. Make it third and 10. Blairsville's just like blitzing four or five guys, and Navani's not getting any chance to drop back and, and throw, and that's just the old adage. You can try as many receivers in the pattern as you want, but if the quarterback only got three or four seconds to throw, it ain't gonna happen. Flood right formation, and the Huskies have no clue what they're doing. They're going to go back in the huddle, and they better hurry, and now they're going to be forced to call a timeout. Yes. We are back at Evansburg. 27 seconds to go. 35 to 12, Blairsville leads. Novotny straight back. Looking to throw, when corks it over the middle, he's got Knievel. Knievel at the 20, has a chance to go. 10, 5, and Knievel is in for the touchdown. Jared Knievel with a 42 yard pass in the line. And a Husky score with 17 seconds to go. Scoring play for the Husky, the 42 yard touchdown. Knievel from the Botany. Jalen Novotny, the Jared Knievel for the score. 42. 42-yard pass, Chris. Just a wee bit of respect here for the Bishop Carroll's club late in the game to be able to put another score on there. try and tack on the uh, one-point extra point and make this a 36. Uh, no, it's a fake. It's a fake, and here is Brian Sakalas running it in. Brian Sakalas carries the ball into the end. And that makes the score 35-20. At least the play, yeah. Yeah, sure, if you scored, you didn't have to walk. 35-20. Yes. Huskies setting up. Or will they onside kick it? Jody Dumb will kick. Bowers is back to receive. And it looks like an onside. They shift. It is an onsider, and he kicked it where nobody was. Greg Persichetti falls on it at the 41 yard line. They, they shifted everybody over to the left side, and Dumb kicked it straight ahead, hoping to bounce it off of someone, but Persichetti fell on it. And with 17 kicks to go on the clock, 35 to 20, Blairsville will look to run it out. And 
they'll start the clock and that will be it. Time will expire though. And the Bishop Carroll Huskies 20. Chris and I will be back to recap tonight's game right after these messages. Hearts, Dr. Strong, Mohawk, and Quebec.